this week we're going to make fall leaf drawings using warm and cool colors. We're also going to use the elements of art, shape, line, and color in this project. So first, let's learn about what happens to leaves in the fall. Let's watch the story, Autumn Leaves by Ken Robbins to learn more. Here we go. Autumn is a time to look closely at leaves. In spring and summer, the leaves on most trees are green. But in autumn, those green leaves turn different colors and fall to the ground. Some leaves just dry up and turn a dull brown, while others turn colors that are brilliant and bold. Orange, yellow, red, purple, and gold, painting the landscape and changing the world. The leaves of most trees are flat and thin. Most are connected to the tree by a stem. All leaves have veins. The veins of some leaves are quite easy to see. Some leaves are shiny, some are dull. Some have shapes that are simple. Some have shapes that are not. Sometimes, lots of leaflets make up a leaf. Some are big. Some are small. Some are narrow. Some are wide. Some leaves are not the same on their right and left sides. Others have edges that are jagged or edges that are smooth. Leaves are different on each different tree. Look at them carefully and see what you see. Green leaves make food out of something as slight as carbon dioxide and water and light. Green leaves make a kind of sugar to help trees grow. It's made from water and light and a part of the air called carbon dioxide. There is a proper word for this, photosynthesis. There are special scientific words for the chemicals that give leaves their color. It's chlorophyll that makes them green. The yellow is from xanthophyll. The orange is carotene. The reds and purples are anthocyanin and brown is the result of something called tannin. When photosynthesis stops in fall, the green parts of leaves dries up and dies. Then we start to see the amazing colors, the yellows and golds that were there all the time. And sometimes a bit of sugar gets left in the leaf when it dies. That turns the leaf purple or red for a while. Sooner or later, all those colors fade to brown. Eventually, the base of the stem where the leaf is attached to the tree, grows brittle. Then, when the wind blows even a little, the leaf breaks off and flutters through the air to the ground. And before you know it, all the leaves are down and the trees are bare. Now that we've learned about what happens to leaves in the fall, let's make some fall leaf drawings today. For your supplies, you'll need paper, the leaf drawing direction page, which is available in Google Classroom, and I'll zoom in on it. So I will go over how to draw each leaf in our direction video soon. A pencil, an eraser, a black marker to outline, and your choice of coloring materials. We will be using both warm and cool colors. So remember with a color wheel, you can split it in half and with the yellow, oranges, and reds, you have warm colors and the greens, blues, and violets are called cool colors. First, we'll draw at least five leaves on our papers with pencil. We'll try to use different sizes and overlap and crop our leaves. Next, we'll outline them with a black marker then we'll color our leaves in with warm colors and we'll color in our backgrounds with cool colors. Let's see how to do this now. 
So for your materials today, you'll need a piece of paper, a pencil, an eraser, a black marker, and coloring materials separated into warm colors and cool colors. I will be using crayons, but colored pencils will also work really well for this step. I also went on a walk and I collected leaves on my walk to observe the different shapes that leaves can be. And I also found leaves that had started to change colors because it is fall. So this leaf was green, but it looks like it's starting to become red. This leaf was green, but it turned into a yellow. This leaf was probably green, but it's definitely more of a reddish brown color. So it would be a good idea to find some leaves for this project just to observe their sh different shapes and colors, maybe in your backyard or maybe go on a walk in your neighborhood. So to start your leaf drawing, use your pencil and I'm going to show you how to draw some different types of leaves. I'm going to be using a direction sheet that you can find on Google Classroom and you can follow along with the directions. When we look at a leaf's shape, there is an outside shape, which I'll show you how to draw. There is a large stem or vein in the middle and we can usually feel it on the back and that runs up the middle of the leaf shape. And then there is this V shape, which are smaller veins that go up the leaf. So you'll have your large line in the middle and then the shape of the leaf. And this is a basic leaf shape. And then for the veins, and then for the veins, it's really important that you keep them at a diagonal line. We're going to use kind of like a letter V shape, not flat. So we don't want our veins to be flat. So use the shape of the letter V to draw vein lines. If you were able to collect leaves, one idea is place it on your paper and trace around the leaf shape. And I'm holding down the leaf with one hand and tracing it with the other hand. Now, leaves are not a perfect shape and they're also not completely flat. So I might get a little bit of a bumpy shape, but that's okay. I can go back over it with my pencil and trace around the edges. Then I can draw the middle line and the veins. This might be another idea instead of using the drawing directions. So I can put my leaf down on the paper, trace around the edges, and I'm trying to go slow because the leaf is delicate and it could rip. And remember that it's okay if you don't get a perfect shape, but that you can go back over the edges and make it a better shape. So first I'm going to show you how to draw this type of leaf. This shape we often see on willow trees. So to start, I'm going to draw a slightly curved diagonal line. Remember that's a line that's going at an angle. It could go this way or that way. And then I'm going to draw a, if I turn it this way, it's kind of like a rainbow line or an arch. I'm leaving a little bit out at the end for the stem. Then I'm going to draw a smile line. And then I'm going to draw some V shapes on the middle line for the veins of the leaf. Just going all the way up. I would like you to include at least five different leaves. Some of them can be big, some of them can be small. So here is that same shape, 
but smaller. And notice I put this one going at this angle, this one's going at another angle, so it kind of looks like they are falling. The next type of leaf that I'm going to show you, I don't actually have an example of, but this would be something you might find from a walnut tree. So again, I'm going to start with that curved diagonal line, and then I'm going to make a big V shape. One, two, like the letter V. Next, I'm going to draw a similar shape to this leaf or this leaf, but on all of these three parts. So a rainbow line on top and a smile line below. A rainbow line on top, a smile line below. Rainbow line on top and a smile line below. Next, I'm missing the veins, so I'm going to use that letter V shape. The next leaf that I'm going to draw is called a poplar leaf. This is probably the closest one that I found to its shape. I'm going to start with that slightly curved diagonal shape, and then I'm going to make almost like the side of a heart. So if I turn it upside down, one side of the heart and another side of the heart. Next, I need to draw the veins. These veins are going to come out to the edges. So it's like a large and wide letter V. So how many leaves do I have? One, two, three, four. I can definitely fit more on my paper. Here's one of my favorite leaves to draw. It looks something like this. It has some wavy lines for its edges. And this might be a leaf you'd find on an oak tree. So I'm gonna turn my paper around because I want to have some leaves going in a different direction. I'm going to start again with that slightly curved diagonal line. Then I'm going to draw the letter V shape first. One larger one and one smaller one at the top. Now I'm going to draw a curvy line that goes around those points. So I'm going to go like this. One, two, three, four, and five. I'm going to draw another one of those in a smaller size. So start with the slightly curved diagonal line, one larger V shape, and one smaller V shape. And then going like this, one, two, three, four, five. Next is probably the hardest leaf to draw, but I bet that you can do it. It looks similar to this, and you might find this shape on a maple tree. So I'm going to draw this, the middle line first that we've been doing with every leaf. And then I'm going to make these scalloped edges. And it's okay if it doesn't look exactly like mine because leaves are all organic shapes. Remember, an organic shape does not have a right or wrong way. So the leaf could have part that's broken off or maybe it just grew in a different way. So don't worry if it doesn't look exactly like mine. So I was trying to draw the other side to match this side. Now I'm going to add the veins using that V shape. And there's a maple leaf. So one idea that you can do is overlap your leaves. This will just make your artwork extra interesting. So I'm going to put a leaf behind this leaf. So to do that, I'm going to only draw part of it. Try to overlap at least one or two leaves. Another idea is cropping your leaf. 
and cropping means that the leaf goes off of the page. So I'm only going to draw part of it. I'm going to start with the middle line and then I'm going to make the outside shape but I'm going off my page so it would go onto my messy mat here. Now I'm going to make the veins. I think it'd be interesting if I cropped another leaf here. I still have some space on this corner. I think I could do a little bit more overlapping and then I'll be finished. So I'm going to put a leaf over here. I'm also going to crop this one, go make it go off the page. And this will be a willow shaped leaf. Now that my space is filled with leaves, and remember you have to draw at least five and your paper should be filled with leaves. So if you've drawn five, but you have a lot of empty space like this, this is not five, but I have a lot of space, then you could fill in the rest with more leaves. But if your paper is filled, use a black marker to outline the pencil lines. I will be using a Sharpie. So remember outline means I'm going to slowly and carefully trace my pencil lines and I'm going to speed up the video, but I want you to take your time so that your artwork looks your best. outlining I'm going to erase any of the pencil lines that are showing through our next step is to add color to our leaves and we learned about how leaves change color in the fall they change to mostly warm colors we still see some green on leaves so we can add a little bit of green today, but we're going to be mostly using warm colors, which we know are reds, oranges, and yellows. I also have a little bit of a red violet in here because sometimes we do see leaves that color. And I added a brown because leaves also change to a brown color sometimes. And you can kind of test your colors on the back of your paper just to make sure that you like the shade. And I've also have some cool colors set aside. And we know the cool colors are greens, blues, and violets. We're going to be using those for the background or the area around our leaves. And that will show contrast. So to get started on our leaves, I've already colored in some of these but I'm going to finish coloring in the rest. So you'll want to use at least two colors on each leaf. Some of these I've used more than two, so more than two colors is fine, but we're going to work on blending or mixing our colors. So you may wanna pick a color to color in one side of your leaf or the edges of your leaf first, and then put something different in the middle. So for this leaf, I am using red on the outside. So I'm getting lighter as I go into the middle with the red crayon. And that is called using value. So you can get some dark red by pressing harder. You can get a lighter red by pressing lightly on your crayon. You can also do this with a colored pencil. So now I'm blending in some orange. I'm going to put a little bit more red on top to blend it. Now, maybe I want a leaf that has some green on it. So it might have been green, but maybe it started turning another color at the top. 
So I'm going to put green at the bottom. And again, I'm pressing harder with my crayon to get a dark value. And then I'm pressing down a little bit less so that the green is a lighter value or a lighter green. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow. So this was a green leaf, but it changed to yellow. And then I'm also going to add some orange. Another color that you might want to include is brown. So I'm going to add a little bit of brown in these leaves. And then I'm going to blend some red. And a little bit of orange at the top. Now I'm going to finish the rest of my leaves and speed up the video, but remember that you need to use at least two colors on each leaf and that you're using warm colors with a little bit of green added and a little bit of brown if you'd like. All of the leaves are colored in I need to work on my background and for the background remember we're going to use cool colors so get your greens your blues and your purples out I'm going to use some crayons and a little bit of watercolor paint you can use any material that you like for the background so first I'm going to use some crayons I'm just going to lightly color with the crayons and blend the cool colors in around the leaves. But I'm not filling in all of the white space. I'm leaving some of it for my paint later. Now that I've colored with crayons, I'm going to paint over the crayon in the background with watercolor. When you use crayon and then you add watercolor, that is called a wax resist. Crayons are made of wax and wax resist water and the water is in the watercolor. So you're going to be able to see the crayon texture through the watercolor. But remember that you can use any supply that you'd like as long as it is in cool colors for your background. If you are painting, you will need a water cup, a paintbrush, and your paints. If you're using watercolors, remember that you need to wake up your color by adding water to it. Remember to tap your brush on your paint, never smush your brush into the paint because you don't want to ruin its bristles. Its bristles are its hair and we want to keep it nice and pointy so that it will make beautiful paintings for us. So I'm going to take my brush and paint right over the crayon. And I'm going to try to paint around my leaf. So I am done with my fall leaf drawing. I've drawn at least five leaves on my paper. I've outlined them with a black marker and I've colored them in with 
at least two warm colors. And then for the background, I used cool colors and I decided to paint. But remember that any art supply you have will work for the background. I hope you had fun creating your fall leaf drawing today. Thank you.